Hello Rock and welcome for another update of the, the Lynx project. There are many things we're going to discuss today. Uh, the first one would be the roadmap on the deliveries and what to expect and where we are with our volume and our production. We're going to talk about the developer experience, the store. Uh, we're going to talk about the controllers, the roadmap and everything we've been doing for the last uh, few weeks. So I have made a quick presentation for you. Uh, you're going to love that. Let's dive in. All right. Um, okay, so you should still hear me. I think the first news is that we have um, we have 500 more headsets coming in uh, December. So that's a very very good news for the Kickstarter that are still waiting. I'm very happy that we could deliver. Uh, in September and October and we have more devices coming out of the factory. We need to check every device before we send it uh, because uh, since it's the beginning of the production we need to make sure that those devices are uh, conformant with our uh, level of standard. Maybe you've been following that we had uh, some cosmetic and packaging issue. This has been fixed uh, in the last few weeks. We're going to talk about that later. Uh, also, uh, some people were um, telling us that uh, they did not have any notification about the delivery. That is true because we are rolling out our own uh, logistic mechanism. And now I am happy to tell you that uh, every time there is a new shipping on our platform, you will receive a, an email with the tracking number. Um, if you think we have sent you something because you're one of the first backers but haven't heard anything, feel free to message us like, may, like many of you already did, uh, either by email or on the unofficial Discord, or maybe even um, on the Kickstarter page and we'll send you uh, your tracking number. We have sent approximately 200 devices out in the wild, a bit less than that because we had some defects. Um, but we, I'm very, very happy that the first Kickstarter users um, had their devices in hand and could compare it to current headsets. We are going to dive into the software news. So the very good news is that the application store will be ready by next week for the first developers to upload their apps. So for the moment, we will only support free applications. Uh, paid apps will come early 2024. We need to make sure that uh, the right payment gateway is in place and that we are conformant with the requirements of the countries where we are going to to work. But basically, if you have a small app that you want to test uh, and let user download on the Lynx platform, it will be available for you to do next week. Along, the, along with this news, we had a new software update that shipped last week. Uh, we call it the 1.1.7. And this, um, this operating system update has a lot of news, but the big one is that now we have a be much better battery and charging behavior, which means that you can turn off the device and when you charge it on over USB-C, the device won't turn off, turn on again, like it was the case before. So for some users, we had this bug where you were plugging in the headset, but the headset was consuming as much or even more than the, the power consumption that the charger was able to deliver. So it was not really working very well. This is fixed now. Also, we have password improvements. Uh, before that update, when you turned off the displays or the proximity sensor was triggered, uh, when you came back into your session, the video see-through, uh, the video see-through image would be not synced and uh, had some delays, which is really not something we want. Also, the last thing is that now our OpenXR runtime is very stable. Uh, I'm very happy with the runtime level that we have. And alongside all of that, because we are happy with the level of quality we have now, we are opening our source code of all our work, uh, which means that everything we've been working on at Lynx, which is, you know, sometimes it can be a driver, it can be uh, firmware stuff, kernel stuff on the Linux or Android side, but it's also the samples or SDK everything is intended to be open and we want everyone to be able to contribute to this effort. So this is why we we have this uh, compulsive disorder to try to do everything ourselves, including hosting all of our, all of our infrastructure. 
but because of that was not the best for people to contribute, we opened a GitHub organization. So there is a, a link in, in my presentation here, but on GitHub now you can find links and we are starting to uh, upload our samples. Then we will do our SDK and we are going to go down from there all the way to the, maybe to the kernel stuff. Um, so right now you have libraries to access the point cloud, to access the cameras, all the raw data of the, and, and the low level stuff of the headset, which is already something new. It, it's already something that you are not really able to do on any other uh, mixed reality device for the moment. Uh, you can download this, this library uh, in our portal website on the download section. Something else that I wanted to share is that one of the things, I think the most exciting thing we're going to open source in the coming weeks is the launcher of the headset. So the launcher is the default application when you turn on the headset. You, this is where you see the list of your application, your settings and all of that. And we are going to open source that. What does that mean? It means that our bootloader is open and you're able to root the Lynx device, which technically means that you are able now, you will be able to customize the Lynx launcher, which is a system application and to make it your own and to customize it and to bring new, new functionalities. And we are very excited about that. So I'm just sharing it today with the community, but when we will really release it in the coming weeks, like before the end of the year, I'm pretty sure it will make big wave in the community in the sense that this is now really going to be an open source headset in the sense that you are able to do really whatever the really whatever you want with, with it. Alongside that, uh, we have a custom OpenXR loader, which is not something very desirable, but because we're using, uh, we, our runtime is based on the custom Qualcomm runtime that is still OpenXR compliant. Um, we also figured that the Kronos OpenXR loader was compatible with our runtime. So if you have an application and you're only, only building with the Kronos OpenXR loader and you don't use very exotic extensions, there is a very high percentage chance that your application is already compatible with Lynx. And the, you know everything running on our platform, which, uh, whether it's, it uses the custom loader or the Kronos loader, it's all Monado underneath anyway. So it's you know nothing should surprise you about the hardware and the platform as i was telling in the beginning the cosmetic and the packaging issues were fixed uh, there is a fine fan noise issue so the the fan of the headset um, can sometimes be very noisy especially when you when you make turns uh, with your head it's under investigation by the vendor of the fan which is uh, delta electronics we're going to try to fix that uh, but it, it's unclear to exactly pinpoint the issue yet we are going to show your uh, we are going to show you the controllers before the end of the year and we'll try also to show them at CES early January um, in case of uh, a defa uh, defect of your headsets we will send another headset and try to repair yours after a return um, I know I think we have two or three backers that that uh, receive the headset with a faulty display uh, Good news is that we know the issue and we fixed that alongside the cosmetic and the packaging. Uh, but we, we, we are going to send you uh, another one as soon as possible. Also, we have been, we are still continuing to do our work with Ultralip for the hand tracking and there are some improvements coming. I think one of the things we're going to test is something that is a bit less power hungry. Um, the folks are at uh, Ultralip had the very cool ideas to, um, still keep the same level of quality, but use something that is co going to consume a few less milliwatts uh, on the headset. And uh, as you know, standard on headsets are very uh, dependent on the power that they use. So every help here is welcome. Um, and I put down a screenshot of the upcoming uh, administration panel of the Lynx App Store. And you can see that I started to upload the planetarium demo. So next week, not only you're going to be able to discover the different uh, panels of the as a developer to upload your app, but you will, will also be able to download our APKs uh, or applications like the famous Planetarium, but we also have a couple more demos that are uh, going to be uploaded this week. 
No, I wanted to finish about the company, a few words about the company itself. Uh, some people have been asking, well, is Lynx a B2B player? Is it a B2C player? It's not really clear. What are you going to do about all that? Uh, this market is moving very fast. Apple is coming. Meta is still there. We don't know about the Chinese, what's going on in India, and all of that. Let me be clear about that. Uh, the, the headset today is a very, the Lynx R1 is a very capable and versatile product. It can be used for gaming, it can be used for training, for remote assistance, for, for various use cases. It, I think, but I think most of all, we are seeing a great uh, trend in the enterprise market, in the B2B market. Because people want to do gaming today, they would buy a Quest 3 or a Quest 2 or something that is cheaper and brings immersion very fast, very, very well. And this is where the games are today. So this is, this is not really for us at the moment. This is not the best market we can penetrate. I think what we can do best is to be a pure player in the B2B market. So to be like um, a replacement for HoloLens. And I think we're doing a great job at that with Lynx R1. Having said that, now that we're moving, now that the market is moving, now that Apple showed his, his toy and uh, his expensive thing, uh, we see that I mean, we're betting that in the coming years, the the trend is going is going to continue upwards with the B2C market as well. So consumers should expect from us a product that is going to continue to address enterprise use cases and something that, is, that will also be very pleasant to use for um, uh, large field of view, VR immersion, uh, alongside very good uh, mixed reality experiences. Uh, like the one you, you can expect from uh, big other players. So we have a clear roadmap, and I think that we are going to see, as the devices become more powerful, we are seeing that there is an alignment between what consumers are expecting and what professionals are expecting. And I think our next headsets uh, that I can't show you today are going to be uh, used in both uh, categories. But for now, I would say, I don't see I don't see links as being only B two B or B two C. I think this is uh, this is not the right way to approach uh, this business, this market. I think today it's the, the use cases, the market reality is on the is in the enterprise market. But as you know, for a player like us who cannot subsidize headsets, who cannot put billions on the on the on the map. So, uh, all right. I'm back. So I was there all along. But I, I really wanted to put that into perspective into what we're doing here. I think, you know, I, I think Lynx R1 is going to be an exceptional developer kit with very good capabilities for what is coming down the road on the consumer market. Uh, we are seeing deployments of that device on the enterprise market and we still have a lot and lot of people to deliver with thousands of back orders because we had this Kickstarter but we also have orders from uh, companies all around the world in different sectors and one of the one of the things that uh, probably frustrated is, is still a frustration and uh, is probably a frustration to people like you who are watching uh, these updates videos is that I think you know, since we started, uh, I, I think we started Lynx when it, I started Lynx when it was like the peak of HoloLens, like mixed reality was going to be uh, through those transparent glasses and uh, Microsoft was paving the way and explaining to the masses and to people in the industry, this is the way to go, this is what, what mixed reality is going to be. And at the same time, I, I just finished my studies and, and I thought that that's not really going to be the case because because of the problems of the of the optics use of the limitation that those devices still have today and don't have tackled for as much as we know but when you look at the smartphone world and the supply chain things are still getting better and better every year cameras displays and pass through is all about that it's all about leveraging the smartphone supply chain and i think that hasn't changed and we are we are I'm continuously amazed by what the vendors are providing in terms of sensors and displays. Um, and with the right optics, 
uh, you can do amazing things that the devices like the Magic Leap or the HoloLens will never be able to to achieve. Um, well, and now that we see that Apple validated that view, you know, with their headset, which is also a pass-through headset, uh, I think we're still doing the right thing. But what what was frustrating is that we never had the the funds, like the working capital, to really deliver what we wanted when we wanted it, which is part of li part of life. But you know we are we are still tackling issues that those big companies don't have to tackle. Uh, some of their groups they have to fight for their for their budgets, but we have to fight uh, to raise capital to keep this company afloat and to make sure that we can really enter this uh, sales pipeline where we are selling enough headsets so that we have a working capital that that create value. And this is really, really hard to achieve in the com consumer or almost consumer electronic world. Uh, but I think we're not far from it. And I, in other videos, I told you about the fundraising we're doing. We're seeing the end of that, and I'm very happy about it. Uh, but uh, it was hard to to see, peop to, to still convince people that mixed reality was the way we saw it, and we still see that links. It was, and surprisingly, it was still difficult to explain even after the Apple announcement. It, it's still a challenge to, to explain. I mean, maybe I'm doing a terrible job, I don't know, but it, it still is complicated to explain to people uh, why it's going to be part of the future, why it's going to be bigger than just changing how people are getting trained for some jobs and all that. But we're getting there. Uh, I'm, I'm, I still have a ton of energy. The team here, you, you don't see them, but uh, they're all here, uh, at least on the hardware floor. Uh, we still have a lot of energy to deliver those devices, to follow the roadmap we have. And I think you're going to see that with links with, with these companies that we are, we are not working like to, to catch up with something that is already on the market. And with Lynx R1, we, we did that. We, we, we tried things that people never tried. And I think we have, we, we made some valid points in this industry uh, with the hand tracking first, with the, you know, six stuff and hand tracking integration, um, this pass through with peripheral vision that is still something I don't see enough. And we are going to continue to bring innovation and new stuff with the coming devices. So, you know, links the, the future devices are not going to be something that we put on the market to catch up with with like a quest 3 or 4 or uh, an apple headset it's going to be something different uh, better in some ways the, and we're we are continuing to take risks that those big groups and those big companies cannot really take because of the gigantic uh, organization they 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 are um but I, I'm, I'm very, very excited for the future. I'm very excited about uh, Links R1 as a product, how it will do uh, in 2024, and how people will get excited before the end of next year where we're going to, going to share the specs of uh, what's next. So yeah, I hope you, you're still following. Um, thank you for the support. I'm going to take some questions now, uh, if there are some in the chats. Um, all right, so let me... Let me take a look. All right. Okay. What is B2B and what is B2C? Sorry about that, but B2B is business to business when you a, a company is selling products to another company. And B2C is usually uh, companies selling directly in retail store uh, something. So when you buy something at Best Buy, for example. Can you confirm when Remote Assist app will be available? Uh, it should be available before the end of the year. Uh, I saw some very good working demos at some customers. Uh, all right. So the point include access, I don't think it's, it's accessible right now. 
but I saw a demo of that and it's going to be pushed uh, to the next release of the Unity preview, so expect that very, like in, in the few coming days. Okay, so Andrea helped me with the question here. Could we work on porting to bare Linux? Um, it, it's going, um, the, the software, I mean, the operating system code is not something we're going to share immediately, but it's technically possible to to use only Linux on the Lynx headsets. Just so you know, the bootloader is open, so try to flash whatever you want. If I put an additional order now, when will I get it? Uh, if you put another order now, you will get it uh, by the end of Q1 2024, according to the to the timeline I have from the factory. What about the special edition and the with, with its issue? So the special edition, I don't know if you remember, it's this uh, transformed headset that we made. Um, we need to secure the first batches of uh, mass production of Lynx R1 before we make a run of the transparent one. But it's coming, don't worry, I still want it to myself, so don't worry, it's coming. All right, thank you. Uh, I'm just looking at the chat. Uh, all right, so I think this was, that was a good session today. Um, the guys are still working, so I don't want to disturb them too much. We are going to make a written recap on that on the Kickstarter. I'm going to uh, so stay tuned maybe on our on our communication channels like the Twitter and LinkedIn because we're as the App Store and uh, the updates are shipping, uh, we are going to share that on those channels. If you are not checking our website every day, um, so oh, there is one last thing. You answered the question from the Discord at the beginning in your presentation. Yeah, I, I did. Oh yeah. Well, if if some of some people from the Discord are are looking, and were late, I answered a lot of questions at the beginning of the presentation. Um, so thank you very much. I will see you at the next session. We are going to be in Florida, in Orlando, at the end of the month. Um, on November 27th for a show there um, for like training and simulation in defense but if you're around feel free to to contact us um, we can see each other at the conference or outside no problem we are going to also be at CES uh, and after that it's science fiction we'll see what we do but uh, it there is a lot of activity I'm, tr I'm trying to bring you everything with transparency but trust me it's a very active environment the team is on the on the on the ground and uh, deep into delivering links r1 and making sure that uh, people will be happy with the with the product and especially with the ecosystem we're trying to build i think it's still sorely needed and uh, and we are going to continue the effort uh, as much as is at it is needed thank you very much have a nice evening or a good morning and uh, see you at the next session. Bye.